I just can't get over how Spotify gave a platform to one of the most ignorant and uninformed people on this planet. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how insulting Meghan Markle's podcast, Our Swipes, Episode 4, was to the Asian community. But before we get started, if you like this content, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe as you don't want to miss out on future videos. Okay, let me now rip this apart. So I listened to this crap so you guys wouldn't have to. And no surprise that she exposed herself further for being uncultured and truly an ignorant ass. This week's exploited minority guest was Margaret Cho. And for those that don't know who Margaret Cho is, she's a comedian here in the United States. I personally don't find her funny, but some do. And she also had journalist broadcaster Lisa Ling, who I think she's very intelligent and was quite surprised that she would lower herself to participating in this podcast. So I'm going to read to you how Megan opened up this podcast. She begins, Growing up in Los Angeles, these are the types of foods I would eat. Tamales, larb, matzo ball soup, adobo, along with your usual kid fare of chicken nuggets and fries and burgers and pizza. And the types of languages I would hear? Honestly, more than you can imagine. From American to Farsi, Korean, Spanish, Hebrew. I'm just going to pause right there. I didn't know that American was a language. I thought we spoke English. Anyhow, Los Angeles, despite how segregated it sometimes felt, was full of culture that you could see, feel, hear, and taste on a daily basis. The multitude of Asian cultures was a huge part of that for me. My weekends were spent in Little Tokyo or having iced tea in Thai town or sitting with my friend Christina Wong and her parents at a local Chinese restaurant. I remember this so vividly and them teaching me why chow fun with dry noodles was so much better than chow fun with wet noodles. Now, obviously, I had a real fixation with food. But more than that, I had a real love of getting to know other cultures. And part of that, my mom and I would often go to the Korean spa together. Now, those of you who haven't been to one before, it's a very humbling experience for a girl going through puberty because you enter a room with women from ages 9 to maybe 90, all walking around naked and waiting to get a body scrub on one of the tables lined up in a row. All I wanted was a bathing suit, but you're not allowed by Aunt the way. And once I was over that adolescent embarrassment, my mom and I would go upstairs, we'd sit in the room upstairs having a steaming bowl of the most delicious noodles, and we'd look around at all these other women. These beautiful Korean women who had embraced the generational tradition of the Jim Jilbang and shared it with one another. Now that was a part of the Asian American culture that I knew. In a nutshell, Meghan Markle managed to apply seriously her understanding of the Asian culture down to eating noodles and going to the spa. If she truly understood the definition of stereotypes, she would not have made this epic mistake and insult to the Asian community. As Rachel Raglan has lied on just about everything, I'm going to call out the BS in lying about her going to the Korean spa with her mother and getting naked while she was going through puberty. Megan's mom was not around, and how many times has she talked about on the TIG going to dance class and then going to steakhouses with her father? Never once did she ever talk about this Asian experience that she had with her mother. This podcast was similar to her last podcast that she did with Mindy Kaling and the experience of making it in Hollywood. Again, the podcast was unrelatable to the majority of the world. And it's apparent that the series is about minority women in Hollywood and how they are treated and perceived. The insulting word of the day for Megan to passive-aggressively insult women, now including the Asian women, was Dragon Lady. And through this definition, Megan managed to slut-shame 
Asians by emphasizing pop culture and aware of how it's being applied when it comes to sexualization. She proceeds to bring up and say movies like Austin Powers and Kill Bill, they presented these characters of women of Asian descent as over-sexualized or aggressive. And it's not just those two examples. There are so many more. But by the way, I'm not the only one who has taken notice. And she goes into allowing Margaret Cho then to explain the definition of dragon lady. And Margaret proceeds to explain what it is, which didn't think it was so terrible, but Megan makes it as if it's a trope that's holding Asian women back. Where she failed and pinned herself in a corner was that the topic was very specific to focusing on Asian women in Hollywood and the types of roles that they would be getting. And those roles would either be these femme fatale roles or they would be over-sexualized as being sex workers in, you know, the times of war over in Vietnam or the Korean War. So then Megan brings in the subject matter expert, whoever she is, sociologist Nancy Wang, to talk about the dragon lady stereotype and the femme fatale angle as well as the hypersexualized angle on it. Megan proceeds to briefly touch upon the book that Nancy Wang had written called Real Inequality, Hollywood Actors and Racism. So again, we are now pushing the angle of race and really making sure that you understand how different you are if you are Asian now. Then goes into talking about the clip from Full Metal Jacket where there is a sound bite where if you don't know it, it says, well, baby, me, so horny, me, so horny, me, love you, long time. Which then, of course, Megan being the unoriginal and I want to say cliche that she is, because that's what she is now to me, is a cliche. Of course, she uses the two live crew, me, so horny clip, which, to be honest with you, there were other clips that she could have used that were way better to really put the point across about being Asian and this is the stereotype and this, these are the roles that you'll fit into, but I'll leave it at that because I don't expect her to do any better. But yeah, it goes into that and that made me cringe. It did. It really did. Now at this point, we're halfway into the podcast and I am finding it very offensive and negative to the Asian population. Essentially, she has niched the stereotype into it being that Asian women in Hollywood are seen as prostitutes or sex workers, and those are the roles that they get. The biggest stereotype this ignorant idiot completely ignored is that Asian people she's classifying are those with certain attributes, or should I say intrinsic attributes. She completely ignored the Indian population. They are also Asian, too, because India is part of the continent Asia. What I find is that this podcast that Megan is doing doesn't help anyone but really be a sense for Megan to be complimented and tell herself that she matters. And we'll get to the end on what she says. But she could have taken this in a direction where... She could have made it positive by talking about if, if Hollywood is the focal point that she is staying in, why didn't she address the Indian population and talk about Bollywood and how the messages and perception of what, how women are portrayed on the screen over in India are very different to how America trashes and, and bashes Asian women. In Bollywood, some of the stereotypes that you would see are the women live for their families. They get into relationships only to get married. They consider motherhood as the ultimate goal. And since Megan is so obsessed with racism, she could have looked at how Bollywood tries to emulate Hollywood and why the women over there have to lighten their skin or feel like they have to straighten their noses in order to get roles and jobs. What's highly irritating is that Megan later on proceeds to say, and we talking about the stereotypes around Asians is saying you have to take it back to the beginning because people don't realize how that seeped into us. It's even when, you know, it's a different version of saying like 
oh, I know, I don't read the stories, I don't read tabloids, but you see the headlines, so it makes an imprint. So you might not know where this unconscious bias or this stereotype that you have in your head about someone comes from. Now, she should keep her mouth shut because she is the one who works very closely with the tabloids and causing all this ruckus and putting into people's head about racism and stereotypes. What do you think this whole podcast is? She is responsible in a way towards the way that society is, the why it's seeping into us is because people like her who see this kind of garbage into people's heads. I'll be honest, at this point, my ears started to turn off into what Megan was saying because it just, she really showed she didn't understand anything about the Asian culture. And despite Margaret Cho having her say, and it sort of turned into talking about guns and how, you know, the tropes or the stereotypes of Asians that have seeped into the public have gone to a place where it's become dangerous. No, I, I have to disagree. I have to disagree about that. People these days are so charged with so much racism and hate, rightfully so, because you've got people like Meghan Markle, who is bringing up race and hatred and gaslighting people every two seconds, that there's no wonder why there's so much angst in the community. For whatever reason, people target or, or go after different people. It's not just Asians that this is happening to. And the fact that she's making it just about Asians is annoying in itself. What also is annoying is that the Archetypes team that Megan has hired, the writers, the producers, the head audio people, they're all white. None of them know anything about Asian stereotypes. If they had done their work, they would have went to the origin of how Asians in Hollywood, if Hollywood was the focus, as it seems to be, if Hollywood was the focus and Asian actresses or Asian stars who had faced all this discrimination, racism, stereotypes, limited roles, yada, yada, then they should have started with Bruce Lee and then talked about Shannon Lee. In fact, Megan should have had Shannon Lee on her show to talk about the barriers that her father broke in Hollywood that paved the way for her to make it. In addition, Shannon Lee was biracial. So why didn't they think to talk to them? It's quite simple. It's because they know nothing about what they're talking about. And that's the reason why. And the kicker is earlier in the podcast, she talks about Kill Bill. Well, where do you think they got inspiration for Kill Bill? Bruce Lee. Is you can't make this up. Megan failed to share that the trope for Asian men in Hollywood was far worse than it was for Asian women in Hollywood. And if you take a look back in history, there are many instances of where the stereotype of Asians were carried out in roles for men. So in the end, Megan asked her guests to give the three words that would describe them as a kid and then three words that would describe them now, but doesn't really give any indication of the purpose of asking this question because she doesn't share her three words that describe her. What I find astonishing is that she gives this pep talk to the audience, but you know deep down inside that she's giving this pep talk to herself. And here's what she says. As we all get to define ourselves as we see fit, if you want to be weird or be sponge-like, be silly or fierce, be curious or even self-doubting or unsure some days and strong and brave on others, whatever it is, that is up to you. Just be yourself no matter what any societal framework or archetype or loud voice coming from a small place tells you that you should be. Be yourself. Your full, complete, whole layered, sometimes weird, sometimes awesome, but always best and true self. Just be you. You're so much greater than any archetype. Oh, you know she's saying this to herself in the mirror every morning and probably saying, mirror, mirror on the wall, tell me who the fairest of them all. And when it spits back Kate Middleton, she ends up smashing it across the room. <laughs> Anyhow, 
I'm going to put the transcript below. There's no need for you to go and give them clicks. This is probably the suckiest podcast series I've ever listened to. It blows my mind that Spotify gave her $28 million for this crap. This entire podcast series is now revealing itself to be the most racist content that I have gone through. And when you look at the various facets of the podcast between the creators, the producers, the people supporting it, it is all not diverse. It is all very uninclusive. It is all very ignorant, in my opinion. And I think that people need to understand that Meghan Markle is exploiting and using minorities and people who are disenfranchised for her own personal gain, posing to be someone who is an ally or supportive when in actuality she shows that she has no depth or willingness to understand these cultures and should not be speaking on it, quite frankly, because she does not have the business to be speaking on it. That's just my thoughts, my opinion. Archetypes sucks, and Megan is the real racist in the family. There, I said it. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell button, and I will be back soon. Bye. Oh, yeah. such a broad. <laughs>